shaggy dog. A fantasy animal, really? Say again. Are you Dumbo's brother? He needs a haircut. Is that a baby who's carrying a baby or something? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's a Yeah. shade of that tree. He's no fool. Move a little bit. Get your rump out of the sun. There. Come on. Jump up there, kid. There you go. Yeah. There. Look how easy they make it look. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you, fella. I love it on that hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With a question mark tail, huh? Come on, swing. There you go. You swing? No? 
Oh, there's four of them. And one, two, three. See him hanging just by his tail. Not the least bit worried. <laughs> <laughs> now if he slipped, fell, he'd hurt him. Oh, there. There. And as always, we're very fortunate to have some talented trainers working with us. So please help me welcome on stage right now, Mr. Tony Giruli. Bobby and Lolita. This is Bobby, and he's real polite. So what he's going to do first is just greet you all. So can you say hi, Bobby? Bye. No, just say hello. Hello. That's better. Now there is a partner to this routine. Her name is Lolita, and I think it's about time to bring her out. So Bob, can you give her a call? <coughs> You can do that more politely. Okay. Well, during any part of this routine, if you happen to like anything, don't be afraid to show your appreciation by clapping. It shows the birds they've done something correct. Here's Lolita, and why don't we have her start off by saying hello to everybody. Okay, say hello. Hello. Very good. Hello. Now that Lolita's finished. Hello. Now that Lolita's finished greeting. Hello. Hello. What are you doing? Hello. Well, you said to say hello to everybody, Tony. Hello. We're working on it. Hello. Not one at a time. Hello. Okay, one more. Hello. What's your name? Bobby. Bobby. Okay, what's your name? Bobby. <laughs> they do animal imitations. Bob's gonna go first with a barnyard chicken. That a boy. He can also what do you like a horse? Very good, Bobby. Well, now those were outstanding, Tony. Thank you. Bobby did an excellent job. Belita has a couple of her own, though. Can you bark? Bark! 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 That was a chihuahua. She can also do a Siamese cat. No! No! Two more. No! One more. No! And a bird. Good. She does. She's always backstage practicing. Thank you for sharing that with her. You bet. Bobby's got a very dedicated bird. We're going to try a call. She sings a little song, you know. Uh, she does. Time, she sings. Time, it's about time for a song. Oh, I know, but she'd sing anyway. I don't think anybody out here wants to hear a song right now. You want to hear a song? Okay. Oh, I guess I was wrong. Here we go. It's a lively tune, isn't it? You can sing live if you want. No! 
Second verse. How many verses are there? Forty-two. No, no, no. Big finish. No, no, no. It wasn't that funny. <laughs> Look, if she can't control herself, she can work somewhere else. Like Colonel Sanders, right? Oh. <laughs> now you've done it. You made her cry. Please <laughs> <laughs> apologize right now. I'm sorry. It was a joke. Okay. <laughs> Is she better? Much better. Okay. We're going to try that cough imitation we've been telling you about. So if you're ready, Bob, can you cough? Thank you. <laughs> well, that was certainly worth waiting for. Do you have something better? Cough. <laughs> Blow your nose. <laughs> well, he also does something that's not quite as energetic as Lolita's, but it is a little bit more cynical. Can you laugh? <laughs> that a boy. <laughs> Politely. Louder. More politely. We can't hear you. Not that loud. Once again, that's slowly to act. And then fold it the other way to make a little square out of it. That is perfect. Very good. All you need to do now is hold it straight off to your side with your right arm a little bit higher. A little bit higher. There you go. Hold very still. We like to direct everybody's attention to the right hand side of the stage because here comes Yo Yo. Where is that young lady holding the dollar? There it is. Pick it up. Bring it all the way down here and put it into the pocket. That a girl. Very nice. Thank you, sweetheart. And thank you, too. Have a nice afternoon. Okay, who else wants to do it? Did you, would you like your, your money back? I'm sure you would. Okay, what you need to do is put your right arm out with your palm flat up. What Yo-Yo is going to do is fly up there and set it in the palm of your hand. And when she sets it down, just close your fingers over the top. Thank you very much for helping me out, too. She can talk. Say, how are you? Good girl. Take that $1 bill to that brave young lady and put it back into her hand. That a girl. Once again, that's Yo-Yo. She has a rose dress to time. Okay, I need another volunteer with a dollar bill. I'm just playing. This is Bucko. He's a great horned owl. They are one of the most common owls found here in North America. We rarely see these birds, though, because they are nocturnal, which means they're more active in the evening. During the day, they just like to sleep. Now, when owls fly, they fly completely silent. And that's because of the special wing design and the feathers that are on the wings. The feathers are kind of soft tooth or jagged. They break up the wind as he flies right along. So this bird can actually sneak up on a prey at night when his prey can't see him or hear him. And so that's two big advantages for this guy. Now there are a lot of misconceptions about owls. And I think the biggest one is that they can turn their head all the way around in circles. We tried that once. It fell right off. <laughs> they can turn their heads about three quarters of the way around in each direction. And the reason why they have to be able to do that is because their eyeballs are so large that they're fixed in his sockets. He cannot rotate his eyes like you and I. <laughs> the eagle has always fascinated us with its magnificent beauty and has been a symbol of strength throughout history. We have an eagle we'd like to show you. Her name is Diana, and she's a golden eagle. When Diana was young, she was taken from her nest by some people who shouldn't have done so. Later, she was confiscated from these people by the Fish and Wildlife Service and turned over to us to use in our educational program. But you can get a closer look at a golden eagle and learn a few things about them. Golden eagles get their name from the golden colored feathers you see located on the nape of Diana's neck. Diana weighs nine pounds and has a wingspan of nearly six feet. Eagles are very beneficial in the wild, as are all birds of prey, because they do eat small rodents, such as rats, mice, squirrels, gophers, they'll eat snakes and they're not above eating carrion, I have a tab. And the mere fact that so many of these beautiful birds are still shot and killed each year. And that's why someone who wants to get a closer look at a particular bird, or by someone who just wants something to shoot. Eagles also mate for life in the wild, and they return to the same nesting spot year after year. So it's very important that we learn to live with these beautiful birds around us. We sincerely the Golden Eagle. Well, before continuing on with the show, we'd like to remind but first, we've got to greet everybody. So, can you say hi? Hi! <laughs> Each other a little bit softer? Hi! Very good. Now, like all good singers, before Poncho, before Poncho can sing, he has to warm up his voice. So, if you're already, can you warm up?
two more. Last one. Good enough, Pancho. Very nice. He's very professional, you know. Good, Pancho. Nice job. Thank you. And by the way, do we have anybody down from San Francisco today? Because a lot of times we get people visiting from the Bay Area. Anybody? No. <laughs> That's. Oh wait, we do. You saved my life. A lady way up there. Okay, here's a song. A whole family. Okay, here's a song just for you. I. I. Tell everybody what you'd say if you saw another bird fly over. What is the new one up there? <laughs> another warm up. Oh, and a high one. Oh, that a boy. Very good. Sounds like a girl. <laughs> his last song is pretty fancy. Listen to how he rolls his R's when it's springtime in the Rockies. What? not only the largest zebra, they also have the skinniest striping pattern, especially on the rump. Take a look. Be trying to compare these stripes to the stripes to us, so no two zebras will ever look exactly the same. In case you're wondering which ones the stripes are, the this is a mother and baby rhino. They're rhinos. Some of their unique features are uh, five to six thousand pound size at full growth. Armor-plated looking skin that's one piece we won on July the 20th. She was 143 pounds at birth and is now to be the scales at about a thousand pounds. Okay, so it can take in a large quantity of the cold Siberian air and warm it up and moisten it up before it gets down into their lungs. How close to our right amphitheaters? The small tan and white animals with a black tail are called Persian goiter gazelle. Most of these are full grown adults. Another saga there with them, too. So knew there were only nine Arabian oryx left in captivity. So those nine animals were gathered together and shipped off the Phoenix Zoo, where they began a breeding program. Papa is in jail here. The Indian rhino is a very, very solitary territorial animal. We do have two mature males. And if we were to put them together out in the field exhibit, they would kill each other. Prehensile upper lip. Dad's becoming a gentle old guy, I guess. He's about 35. I think the rhinos only live to be 40 or 50 years old. Besides, so been with the Zoological Society about 30 years. He was wild for 35 years ago. Pattern because they rely upon light and shadow to help camouflage themselves. These animals live in an open canopy forest where mottled light is able to filter down through the trees to the forest floor, much the same way as it is through the uh, trees down here. The mottled light combines with the small black buck antelope. Male black bucks are black and white or chocolate aged species. Looks like that'll do it for the Asian plains. Jimmy and Josie still enjoying the grass and the sprinklers over there. Unfortunately, cheetahs can run 70 miles an hour, but cheetahs can only do that in short bursts. The Kenya Paula can keep that speed up for quite a long time. the moms. No population explosion with the Kenya Paula about six weeks ago. Tan and white with a black racing stripe on the side. Two young world two. Palm trees, the tallest animals in the park. Again, to our right, we're looking for the Baringo giraffes. Moringos will grow to a height of 18 feet, and when they're that big, they weigh about 3,000 pounds. If you look out amongst those palm trees, you might find some smaller giraffes. We do have three babies right now, two uh, four-month-olds and a six-month-old. There's one next to mom to the far right of the palm trees there. Those baby giraffes could speak to us. They'd tell us they're wide, flat lips. Check out those mouths as they're busy grazing here. Very wide and flat. Why is the African a word that means wide or square lipped? White rhinos are also larger than Indian rhinos, averaging seven to 8,000 pounds. They have smooth skin, not the armor-plated looking skin. 
Some of our animals rely on light and shadow for uh, good camouflaging, others simply blend in with their surroundings. You're probably wondering how an animal like a Gemsbach oryx is going to be protected with that very pretty, unusual coloration. It's called deceptive coloration. If you were a predator and you could only see it down along the fence, you might spot some of our big male kudus. Keep looking, you might still be able to see them. Biggest male's uh, horns will go to uh, over 60 inches, and it's called the European fallow deer. And the big sort of blackish, grayish, brownish animals congregated at the feeder on the hill. Domestic water buffalo have been domesticated as a species for about 5,000 years. They serve as beasts of burden in most parts of the world, but in this country they are probably best known for providing the milk from which we originally made mozzarella cheese. The species that domestic water buffalo come from, of course, are called wild water buffalo. There's about 12 of those animals left. They are rabbit. That is not a sandbar. That's our big British red deer. He likes hanging out the sandbars for some reason. Two tall birds just through the fence to the right. They're gray in color, a bit of red on the face, called saurus cranes. They do stand four and a half feet tall. And out in the water hole, you might find a hooper swim. They're so cute. European bison has not been seen in the wild since 1927. They suffered a similar fate to the American bison. I don't know what the numbers are for the European version. A surgical procedure on them, it's called pinioning. What that means is that we've removed the last digit from the end of one of our bird's wings. Doesn't actually prevent them from... They're also lacking a forelock. That's the hair that normally hangs down between the eyes of a horse. And if you check out their legs, you're liable to find some stripes. No stripes anywhere to be found on a domestic horse. Now that is good news for the pygmy chimpanzees, but it's bad news for them is that their status was chimps live in the rainforests of Zaire, and rainforests everywhere under a lot of pressure from habitat destruction. Whenever we use crops or grazing cattle, or maybe like here in Southern California, it's simply for building new homes and freeways because there's so many of us in shape, body shape. Males anyway have little fur-covered horns like the giraffes do. Also got a very long prehensile tongue if you're going to be a fairly tall and Sit there and look at the wall. Mm -hmm. Come on, Ray. Eat the baby. Bye. Look at If we're watching, he's probably going to pick up a boulder and throw it at us. <laughs> Did you see the baby then, honey? Well, Philip's out on the end of the dock here. He's casting a lure. 
And as you can see, I've got a, a jacket on him that is a flotation jacket, so he should fall in. Good one, that's the way. I'm cranking in, he's using the spinning reel and he knows how to use it. He's wearing my McDonald's cap. <laughs> I think I've lost it. <laughs> Betty just told me that Melby Marlin called, and Melby will be down here on um, Wednesday and Thursday, which both days we're going to go fishing. So Bill Wood unfortunately can't make it. He had something come up on an annual deal, so uh, Melby and I will take Fibber out on, on Wednesday, and then Rex and Aline and uh, Ruth are coming down on Thursday. With it. Ruth is coming with Melby and Betty will go with us out on the boat and we will get something. This I don't expect too much success but give him a chance to try it there. Look the determined look and a smile too. Boy look where that went. Wow! Beautiful cast. Now if the fish would cooperate you'd have it made. Here's our boat here by the way. The Melu 2. That's the flybridge. And the emergency raft. And there's the tackle box down that Bill gave me. And then, of course, there's the built in one on the boat. Fighting chair. There. That's an egg harbor. And those are the bait bags I'm going to put on in just a little bit. So the, we have the uh, boat all prepared to pick up some bait. Then we'll go out and see how the calico and sand bass are working. Philip just pointed out that we've got a mallard and a teal there. Quack, 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 quack. There's our house. Betty is up on the typewriter, bless her heart, doing some work that I normally do. There's the Walker's house next door. And the ramp down to our, to our boat. Power line. You can look down at the red topped house. Right in the really? Oh. <laughs> Don't take pictures, catch a fish. <laughs> Philip hollered. He had a hookup, and I, I was taking a picture down the uh, channel, but he. You, you were kidding me, huh? Well, maybe this time you get one. Anyway, what I was saying that uh, the, in the center of the picture with the red roof, that's the Keatley's old home. And this is the walker's boat next door. On this side of our house is where the Palmers live. And tomorrow we are taking one of their granddaughters to the circus, the uh, Barnum and Bailey Circus, with Philip. And then we're going out for we're going to the early 1:30. Oh. You can't, you did. Now you're not teasing me. No. Well, I'm, I'm turning slow. Only oh. touch. What was it? Oh, <laughs> that's a rockfish. There's the across the channel, and then when you get down to the end, they have a new hotel. The Lowe's Hotel, that's only part of it. Now, Philip is trying to yo yo. And get the little bait in the water to snap up the hook on the. that have, they have yarn tied on them. The Japanese use them to catch bait. But it's not working because the bait are too small. But Fibber's trying. 
<coughs> yeah, we'll take a little look inside the Melu too. You can see down there. Now that's the carpeting we had in our house earlier, and and we replaced it. Now we have it inside the boat. And again, the fire bridge. Now Philip's using the net, trying to net some, but I'm afraid the net's too large of openings. You can see Philip's got that life jacket on that Donna and, and Bill gave me, and I, every time I go on the boat alone, I have that thing on. That means that Philip is just as chubby as I am. When he leaves here, he's going to be. <laughs> he's eating good. Now I don't see any bait. We sure had lots of it there a little bit ago. Where'd you go, Philip? Try this. Hmm? Try this. Okay, just a minute. And now that you're members of the crew, I can tell you the goal of our voyage. The goal of the HMS Pinnipin is to set sail and search for the treasure of the lost Pirate King. Which, by the way, has been missing for over 100 years. Now my first mate, Mr. Seymour, has in his possession one half of the missing treasure map. Now the other half of the map is missing along with Seymour's long-lost brother. Now Seymour's half of the map shows so lads with a wind at our back and a little pirate left, the treasure will be ours! Thank you, men! And thank you, Clyde! And now the Pinnapeg will set sail! Mr. Mines, secure the cargo and re-anchor! Mr. Seymour, pass off the bow line! Mr. Thunder, place the mainsail! Set sail in search of the lost treasure of the Pirate King. The new crew members, however, found it difficult to adjust to life on the high sea. You're my queen, aren't you? Well, buck up there. What the two of you need is an ice cold can of Pepsi. Flying out and then we go 